In this video, we're going to take a look at something called complex fractions. And specifically, what we're going to look at is how to simplify these things that are called complex fractions. So before we get to that, first off, what, what is a complex fraction? That, that'll be a, a good place to start. Um, basically, in plain English, a complex fraction is some sort of fraction or rational expression that you have that has more fractions or rational expressions in just the numerator or just the denominator. So they're kind of like fractions within fractions. I, I'll, here, I'll, I'll show you a couple examples. Um, these can have numbers or variables. So here's just a, a simple numbers example. Maybe you have like two thirds uh, minus seven over, um, I don't know, 11 thirds plus one fifth. This would be an example of a complex fraction because obviously you, you see the large fraction here, but within that large fraction, you also have these little mini fractions in the numerator and or denominator. Now, not everything has to be a fraction like the seven, but, but you see, you, you get my drift. When you have fractions within, within, um, inside of other fractions, that's when you have a complex fraction. I didn't put any variables in here, but you easily could have had variables. So you can see how ugly these guys look and why the, the main thrust of what we're trying to do here is simplify these guys where they're not so ugly anymore. That's what, that's what we call simplifying the complex complex fraction that means make you know do some algebra to make it look a little nicer to where it doesn't have those fractions within inside of fractions anymore so how do we do this let's let's take a look at some some steps here uh, really it's just a two-step process the first step is basically going to get rid of all those little mini fractions we were talking about and then the second step is just going to gonna, uh, be to clean up what's left so first off, how do you get rid of those little mini fractions that might appear in the numerator or denominator? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to look for the LCD, which we know how to do from previous videos, the LCD of just the mini fractions. Now, uh, I've, I've got to admit here, mini fractions is not a very mathematical term. You won't find that in a textbook. That's just, just between us, but I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm referencing the little guys, the little fractions in the numerator and denominator, but don't don't call them mini fractions on a test or anything like that. But uh, you, you get you get my drift though. Um, now, when you multiply this guy to both the numerator and the denominator, that's going to kill off all the little smaller fractions, leaving you with uh, something that's not a complex fraction anymore. But we also do need to do the second step as well, where we clean up or simplify what's left. Okay, so we do those two things, we'll be good to go. So let's try a couple examples. I've got a, an a easier one and a harder one. This one's a pretty light one just to kind of get the, the concept down, and then we'll do a little bit more difficult one in, in just a second. So here, this is just numbers, two thirds minus five divided by one minus seven six. Complex fraction, I wanna make it not a complex fraction anymore. So I look at my little mini fractions, which is this guy and this guy only, two thirds and seven six, and I wanna find the least common denominator between three and six, that's all. So the LCD that I'm looking for between three and six, I think it's gonna be six. Okay, I'm not gonna go through a lot of details as far as how to find LCDs. I assume you already know how to do that. If you don't, I've got some videos on it that, that you can stop this video and go watch. But we're going to take 6 and we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator both by 6. And you'll see why this works now. When you multiply the numerator by 6, if you distribute it through, notice that 6, because it's the LCD, that means it, it contains factors that have, a, you know, it contains a factor at least of 3, which will cancel out this 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 2 times this 2 makes 4. To say it another way, two thirds times six is four. That's basically what we're saying. You could have also done six times two is 12. 12 divided by three is also four. There's a dozen different ways you could say it. Minus five times six, which is 30, divided by your denominator is six times one is six, and six times seven six would be seven. Okay, so you get this guy here, 
And notice with this new expression right here, there are no more fractions within the numerator or denominator, so it's, it's not a complex fraction, but it does still need to be simplified. That's why we had that second step there. But real quick and easy, just clean that up a little bit. 4 minus 30 would make negative 26. 7 minus, uh, 6 minus 7 would be negative 1. So divide those, you get 26. And your final answer doesn't have to be an integer. It might still have fractions, but it should be a nicer fraction than what, what you started with. So anyway, that's kind of a lighter example there. Uh, let's do a more full-fledged example with variables and rational expressions and, and all that fun stuff. So here we have 3 over x squared minus 4, all divided by 1 minus 1 over x plus 2. So I've got a, a little mini denominator here and here. So I want to find the LCD of those two. Now x squared minus 4, as we know, is x plus 2 times x minus 2. So this guy had a factor of x plus 2 and x minus 2. And this guy right here is just x plus 2. So I think the LCD would just be x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we'll multiply that to the numerator and denominator. And that should get rid of our many fractions that are all over the place. So we'll distribute this to the numerator. And actually, there's just one term to multiply it by. Uh, it looks like that this will cancel with both of these factors because x plus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 4. And when we distribute it through the denominator here and here, uh, let's, let's start jotting down what, what that would be. Let's see, we would get a 3 in the numerator. And then we'd get x plus 2 times x minus 2 minus, and then when you distribute to the second term, the x plus 2's will cancel, but not the x minus 2. So we'll put x minus 2. Make sure you put in parentheses because we've got a minus right here that will need to be distributed. And then looks like we've got one more tiny step. Um, let's see here. Let's uh, We could do one of a couple things. It uh, doesn't really matter to me which we do. We could either FOIL this out and distribute that minus and clean it up that way. Uh, or I, I'm looking here, I noticed that both of these terms have an x minus 2. I think I'll just pull out the x minus 2. So if we pulled out an x minus 2, the, um, the first term here would be the x plus 2. And actually, let me jot this over here on the side so I don't mess up our final answer. If we pull out an x minus 2, we would have an x plus 2 here, but then a minus 1, right? Because when you pull out the whole quantity, there'd just be a 1 left. And then this will actually clean up, and I'll just put that in our final answer x plus 2 minus 1 would just be x plus 1. So it cleans up very nicely and notice this guy has no more fractions within fr the fraction so this is no longer a complex fraction. So anyways that's how we simplify complex fractions.